Jesse Coulter, a name etched in country music history. A singer and songwriter, Jesse's first big hit came in 1975 with I'm Not Lisa that topped both country and pop music charts. She's also known for her rocky marriage to the late country music legend Waylon Jennings and for standing by him as he fought his own demons of addiction. We met with Jessie at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville, where she talked about her new memoir, An Outlaw and a Lady, a book about her marriage to Waylon and her journey to a lasting faith in Jesus. Born Miriam Johnson in Phoenix, Jessie's faith was shaped by her mother, a Pentecostal evangelist. It was her faith, her faith in God, her staying attached to God in prayer, in praise, a heritage of faith is what I'm talking about, is better than money, celebrity. It's a marvelous, um, something that's implanted in you, you know, that can't be forsaken for long. At 18, she met and married producer and pop star Dwayne Eddy. Intrigued by his philosophy on life of intellectualism and objectivism, she began to question her Christian beliefs. I had looked into Buddhism, I was into this Urantia book, I had accepted Ayn Rand, existence exists, uh, there is no big universe, a father, all this stuff. And I thought, well, maybe Christ came as Krishna, maybe he came as Buddha. The places I walked are not places that I would recommend. I thought, this is really intellectual, this is really smart, yet I was looking in all the places and not finding what I needed. As Jessie drifted further from God, her marriage started unraveling. After six years, the couple divorced. By then, Jessie and Waylon had collaborated on several projects. As the two continued sharing their mutual love for music, they became inseparable. They married in 1969, forming a country music power duo that achieved rapid success. We were kind of surprised and happy. It was, it was just that simple. We didn't know the impact of what it was going to do. To Waylon went down to Texas and found the young people were really discovering the, our music. The couple released two top 40 singles, Suspicious Minds and Under Your Spell. Then in 1975, Jessie released her breakthrough single, I'm Not Lisa. The following year, she and Waylon were featured on the groundbreaking album, Wanted, The Outlaws, with country legends Willie Nelson and Tom Paul Glazer. Both had children from previous marriages, and Jesse says Waylon loved all of them, but his growing addiction to cocaine was tearing their marriage apart. And Waylon was so much fun and so celebrative and so creative that he was great to be around. But I came to a point where um, I feel like it was getting physically destructive, and I just had to make a decision. And one day, I was opening the door to this little house we lived in, and I said, um, well, there's always God. <laughs> all you can do is pray at certain points. That's all you can do. In 1976, Jessie turned her heart, her marriage, and her husband over to God. I had good reason to leave the marriage. And I had a day in my life on my knees after fasting. I said, I, can, I know you'd bless me if I leave, or you'd bless me if I stay. No matter what I want, what do you want? And those points of submission are amazing what happens. And I stayed. And so from that time on, I knew that, you know, my spiritual father was my partner. And I was there for Waylon, and I was there for him. She says only then was she able to love Waylon with the love of God and pray for her husband. Then in 1979, they had a son, Waylon Shooter Jennings. Five years later, Waylon got over his addiction to cocaine. He quit cold turkey as Jesse poured his last dash of the drug in the toilet and flushed it away. In that moment, she shouted hallelujah, but one prayer had yet to be answered. I was so excited when I, when I came back into my faith and wanted so for him to share that, but he wasn't there. And so I had to learn through trial and error to just live it, and I did. By 2001, Waylon's health had been deteriorating for years. On Thanksgiving Day, he gave his life to Jesus. 
said, I'm, the rest of my life is going to be a mark for the good. He made that decision. A few months later, in 2002, he passed away due to complications from diabetes. Jesse found peace in knowing he had accepted Jesus in his heart. Jesse recently released an album called The Psalms. She says she sees traces of her own life through the story of the biblical character David. You know, David so speaks to our human condition. He gets so mad, he gets so troubled, he gets, and yet he always comes to worship. If you read the Psalms, you just can't miss yourself. It will show you yourself. Through that, Jesse hopes people discover how God's love can restore the broken parts of their lives. And if we just say, you know, I just need you. I need you to be in this. He knows me better than I do. He's been truly the lover of my soul. I'm hoping that it gives people some direction and, you know, acknowledging the power of prayer, because I'm a prayer answered.